Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for staying to, to this time. Um, and I I'm, I'm, I'm hope uh, everyone enjoy uh, this talk about the wine business and wine industry. Um, I would like to say thank you for including the wine industry in this talk. Um, I do believe the wine industry is um, something, it's quite a big thing in Australia. Um, so we are six of the largest uh, wine producing uh, in the world and globally, and we export quite a bit as well with the fifth largest market. Um, globally as well for export wines. So it's very nice here to be able to represent wine industry here. Um, thank you so much for, for the invitation. I don't know how to do this. There you go. <laughs> um, so I'm an art scientist, so I would like to give you more, more about problems we have in the wine industry and what the solutions about how cyber and artificial intelligence can actually help the wine industry. Um, so the idea is to give you three different scenarios. Um, so we're actually we talking about things for the vines until they actually the experience between consumers and the wines. So the idea here is to talk about precision viticulture. Um, Probably a lot of you um, are already speaking a little bit about what the cyber can help in the farming. But um, today I'd like to introduce you something is, is actually some, some examples of business in Australia is um, using the technology for help. Um, so what is, um, how they actually, how can I apply cyber to the wine industry? So that's, we, that's what you're going to talk about. So what's precision of viticulture? So precision of viticulture is uh, we're using um, all the technology, the data for collected data to be able to help in the wine industry. Um, so what is important? It's important because we want to build the sustainable uh, viticulture. So as a, the name is say, we try to get more precision information what the vines need. Um, we do that by using sensor, GPS, and GIS, so different technologies. The problem here, if I, I'm talking to everyone um, here, so everyone have a different knowledge, different things, are taking different information, um, and they, we need a different attention. So it's like a school. So, and in school, when you give a talk, everyone, everyone get, they need to, they, give you different attentions for everyone. So the same is happening actually in the vineyards. Not all the vineyards need the same, the same amount of water, right? Not all the vines need the same amount of fertilizers. So they, how they actually, the cyber can help is actually to give to the viticulture, to the wine producers, the precise information they need. So by having this precise information on how much water or fertilizer I need in the vines, I can actually help the environment because they don't need to use so much water or so much fertilizer, right? So that is about what um, will be the next slide. So what is the problem we see today? And then can you imagine? So everything's to everyone's talking about climate change. Um, so this is uh, was a wine research I did about the Australian market at um, the beginning of this year in January. Um, I speak with so many different wine producers. I interviewed them and asking them, what is the actual the problem here? And they all of them answered the same thing, climate change. What are we going to do? The weather is getting hot. This, the climate is getting hot and hot and dry. So what do you actually how we can actually improve or enhance that for the future. So that is how technology can help. So this is, um, um, so that is um, some code of the viticulture of two hands. So two hands wines is believed to use one, uh, one technology and it's called subflow technology. Subflow is actually helping um, two hands wines, for example, to save some water. So that is, um, we are uh, talking a little bit about this technology here. So I explain very simple way how, how does it work. Um, 
So what the two hands do in the vineyards, um, it's believed that they actually the first one to use that, um, that thing. So it is actually a big research um, about the fruition sciences. If anyone wanted to read into one or more details about that research, I highly recommend um, to Google. It's very easy to find this, um, more information about the, that technology. Um, so what two hands doing the here is actually getting the vines, putting like a sensors in each vine. And by doing that sensor, the sensors actually sap, 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 Sap is actually, I think everyone knows, it's like a the life um, blood from the plant. So, so they actually measure all this, uh, how much the sap from the from the each vine. So they monitoring with the sensor, um, and then by to know how much they actually the each vine transpire. So how much actually the water they use for, for during the process of photosynthesis. So they can really know how much the water for each vine needs. So that is a big thing. Water getting expensive, more and more expensive these days. And we don't, so we don't have so many water valuable these days either. So it's something is really need to think about our future in Australia. So um, and that's what they do. So they try to, to know each vine instead of to put in water for the whole vineyard. They actually see monitoring and see what each vine or each row of the vines really need. That is helping the environment and helping as well to saving money. Um, so I asked Travis, I called him the last week. I said, Travis, please, can you give me some results? I would like to share with you, all of you guys actually some proof. It's very beautiful to say a lot of the things, actually technology can help, but it's out to prove a lot of the people don't believe you. So that is why I asked Travis to, to be able to share actually the two hands results for the last vintage, the last harvest. So they did the trial and the, this is a one in the Barossa Valley. Um, they did a trial um, and the and the vineyards. They have a single vineyards in and the Barossa and Sepatsville, um, and the Brayson. So that's the two regions, and to use that technology, and that's very good news. They're very happy with the save of the water for the first trial. So they had about twenty one as a minimum percent of the water saves, and they maxed thirty two. So very positive. And that's the numbers just for this harvest. So the idea, these numbers actually increase. So second, um, we going to talk about blockchain. Uh, so thank you so much, Natalie, is coming here. So you have any technical, <laughs> technical questions? So Natalie is actually is a, is working here in Australia with that blockchain. So she has the company helping our wine business as well to protect the, um, the integrity. But um, talk you what blockchain is. Uh, blockchain is a method of recording data or transactions. Um, why is important? Um, what is important about this is because it's other layer of uh, traceability and the layer of transparency and the wine business. Um, so any technology can actually help the wine business because we have a big problem. So I don't know if you guys know about like what's going on in the wine business, but we actually have a lot of fake wine. Fake wine market and the wine business is costing a million, a billion, sorry, a billion dollars every year. So many people try to fake it, like good brands when they get famous. What people try to do? Well, let's do copy. Let's do the same thing. Let's like to use the same label. And we see this around the world globally. Um, so, so that's a big issue and the wine business. So a lot of the wine is losing money every year because there's fake ones around. And how we can actually give some solution, how we can combat um, this, this actually this, this problem. 
So I'd like to introduce you a business in Australia, in Bodley. Um, so she started in 2019. Um, so she um, actually has a very good background with technology. And she tried usually protecting the Australia business, the Australia wineries, the Australia producers. So, so Natalie, it's um, it's uh, what 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 actually what the business does. It's pretty much it to recording all the transactions since from the harvest till this bottle get and the final consumers. So the idea is to to recording all this um, data um, because blockchain it is unchangeable. So after you recording everything, after after you actually um, distribute it. You, it's very hard to change. It makes it impossible. So that is why we can actually protect the brand. We actually can actually give the, the actually the wine with producers integrity, the brand integrity. Um, but not just that, but the consumers. Can we imagine you spend me like so much money for a bottle of wine, and then you discover this bottle is fake? How do you feeling? How do how are you feeling after you just spend like in, so many bottles of wine can cost you thirty thousand dollars or maybe more? <laughs> so imagine you feel like cheated, you feel like angry. How are you spending my money and I get like a fake wine? And then what do you do? Nothing because it's fake. You can't really sell. So and then a lot of people buy wine. It's not for drink. Buy wine as investment. So if you think a lot of your wines can be fake and you can buy one size investment and then you discover that's fake. So you have so many cases in the wine industry. So what eBotley company um, try to do here in Australia, it try to protect that the consumers and the brands. So that's the idea to use the blockchain uh, technology. So, the third thing is um, is actually more about artificial intelligence. So it's about AI. I think is um, I heard a lot of lot of learning a lot of the things about with you guys about AI today. Um, so anyone here have you used the Vivino app? No, no. Yes, Paul. Yes, yes. Good. Um, so Vivino app is one of the most download um, app. And, um, about wine in Australia, in Australia, not in the world, sorry. Um, they just uh, pretty much here in Australia, they cut three months and making quite a big effort um, to start a business in Australia. Um, so what, what they actually try to do here is use Vivino, use the artificial intelligence to be able to, to discover the taste and the profile of the people giving different experience for the customers but also try as well to give value information for the companies so how can technology help vivino so what's the problem here why vivino actually did an app um, one app so vivino what things what what's actually the problem in the wine market a lot of people feel embarrassing when they're going to buy wine. And a lot of people, they don't really know what they like. I, I work with fine consumers as well. I do tasties, talk with them, and sometimes they're like, what do you like? I'm not sure. Do you like a dry? I'm not sure. They sometimes they don't really know. They don't really know how to describe what they like, what they don't like. So that's what Vivino saw the opportunity to use artificial intelligence to help them, to help the consumers to understand what they like, or maybe to not feel embarrassing to ask someone to buy one, to just get your phone, get it up, and then you can just scan your label and you have all the information so about the wine. So that's what Vivino um, used artificial intelligence. So we have more details. Um, so that's why Vivino can do that and not other people can do that. Vivino has been in with this business for the last 10 years. They collected so many, so billion of data. So we can see here, um, so much data. So today, when you're speaking about different things today, we 
with one of the things is for be able to use the artificial intelligence well, you need to collect a lot of data. And then that's what Vivian has been done. So, and it's still doing. So then collecting all these rating reviews of the customers to be able to, to use the artificial intelligence. So, Vivino, it's a, so what they actually do is I think is very, very interesting. It's called, to, yes, okay. <laughs> Something is, um, uh, what's Vivino doing here is the one thing I think is very interesting, it's called matching for you. So when you use the app, and then you actually um, take the picture, and we put in the rating review. But when you use it, we have the option, then say like for you. When you click that, so they actually actually suggest to someone for you, and they can suggest someone for you, they actually tell you how much this one is matching with your taste. So, and that's something they do, as for example, Netflix, they inspire Netflix. So Netflix, when you open Netflix, it's like, oh, these movies is suggest for you. Spotify doing the same. So they inspire in that technology to create that for the wine. So uh, my last slide here, so actually it's the screenshot of my Vivino app. So that's here what um, they actually um, doing. So that is what they picked for me. So they picked up Barossa. Shiraz, and the range of price was 118. So lately I have been studying wines and then tastes a lot of expensive wines, so they actually, the machine recognize that. And they start to, <laughs> to, to um, suggest it, like actually more the prices I was rating and review lately. Um, and then they actually, if you're watching, um, they have a, um, in the Forbes magazine. So this is um, the founder of Vivino did an interview. It's very interesting. He telling his, his experience about, and then he's sharing, like he didn't realize he like he loved champagne, but he didn't realize w what type of champagne he likes. And the machine, there's this artificial intelligence is it would be able to help him with that because he knew he liked champagne, but he didn't he didn't he did not like champagne with Chardonnay grape base, but he did he did like the actually Pinot Noir grape. And he didn't know that information till artificial intelligence helped him to understand the ones that he did not like. It was it was champagne with Chardonnay. But what he really liked it was actually champagne with Pinot Noir. So that is type of the information as well, they actually they can help um, the wine business um, to understand the taste and the profile of each customer. So thank you so much. Uh, I hope it was in, the, in time. <laughs> um, so this is some contact as well um, of the, this, this actually the business I was talking about. So Vivino, Two Hands and eBotly. So any more technical or anything more about if you wanted to explore more, feel free to contact um, these amazing people. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Priscilla. Yep, probably uh, we have time for uh, one question. I uh, hope this uh, talk will be a good warm up for our following wine experience. Any questions? More of a provocation. Um, I, <laughs> I use Vivino all the time and I yeah. like it. And But when I'm in the su supermarket, but I realize I like wine from small producers. They are not listed in Vivino. So this is, again, the, the problem that we discussed this morning, that uh, the minorities are not represented. And I'm not sure how to solve it. So can we sort of create a Vivino for small producers? I don't know. Is there a market for it? There's also the money involved. What, what do you think? Yeah, that's a very good question, Paul. Um, so yeah, so the, the, we, for all technology can't be 100%. Like, it, of course, they have a lot of producers. It's not in Vivino yet. Um, but then what they try is to, they actually is a new um, business as well. So it's 10 years old, it's not, it's not really for technology, it's quite new. Um, and I, I, I guess the idea is, is actually growing with the small business as well, not just with the big business. Um, but is this is just for a big thing, then try 
to do in the long 10 years. And the collected data is one of the things then try to improve, for example, that something like this. Um, I'm pretty sure in the future, uh, Vivino will be getting more and more wineries there and then more getting more data and they'll be able to give you even better experience in the future. Thank you so much. Any another question? Yep. We can still take another one because uh, uh, I think you have already got the voucher. So probably, yeah, <laughs> we'll give another chance. Yep. Um, so I'm relatively new to the recommender system space and it's something that I'm looking into as part of my research. And I'm just really interested to um, with the recommender system that you were talking about, whether um, you're using like a profile-based system where um, people will go in and set up a profile of what they think they like and base recommendations off of that, or are you using like um, a past purchases kind of system where it's based on what other people have bought and then rated as well? So, so I think, so what the Vivino doing is uh, when you actually start to rate in review, so then actually it's collecting your what you what what do you like it? Because if you review too low, so the machine is say, oh, she doesn't like it. Um, if you rate it like uh, like a five stars, so then going to one to five stars, so that's what she likes. But then Vivino as well, if you try to use the app, so even you can actually like define like how you feel like the wine. So what is sweet, acidity, so we can actually see if it's like a full body or not. So you actually have like a, a, a way to do as well to understand what your profile of wine. So then use that actually, um, that information, the machine, and then, then what the acidity, the tannins, the sweet, to understand your profile and your taste. So that is how they try to match in wines for you. And the more you put in like a more expensive wine or cheaper wine, so that's how they say like, oh, she doesn't like a hundred dollars wine, <laughs> you know? Um, so the idea is actually collecting more data um, to understand your profile, to understand what you like, to understand what you buy uh, lately and to see what you're rating these wines, how you review, and then to analyze that data to be able to recommend things for you. It's the same on Netflix as well. So Netflix, if you're watching, I don't know, action movies, so probably they started to recommend you more um, this type of movie. Pleasure.